Good evening. My name is Edward Sanchez Oberholzer. I'm the resident priest and guiding teacher here at the Joseph Priestley Zen Sangha in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. We're an affiliate of Empty Moon Zen. We chant, let us be honest, any number of chants that are completely incomprehensible. And we're certainly not alone in this. How many Catholics understood Latin back when the Latin Mass was still performed? In fact, priests were there in part to interpret Latin for the laity. My old brother in the Dharma, Joseph Josh Bartok, used to tell newcomers that we would be chanting in English, but also in Pali, the first language into which the Dharma was set down. In some incomprehensible syllables that are an English transliteration of what is chanted in Japan, which is a Japanese transliteration of what is chanted in China, which was in turn a Chinese transliteration of what was chanted in Sanskrit in India. And no one aside from D.T. Suzuki, seemed to have any idea what that meaning was. And finally, we chant in Sino-Japanese, a kind of Japanese pronunciation of Chinese characters which modern-day Japanese generally understand no more than modern-day Americans can comfortably read Shakespeare, much less Chaucer. So here is that Sino-Japanese chant, a chant to invoke the Bodhisattva of compassion, Avalokiteshvara, or as he or she is known in Japan, Kanzeon. The chant is brief, so brief that we repeat it three times, and yet never use it up. The full title is Enme Juku Karongyo, and the text all ten verses goes Kanzeon Namu Butsu yo Butsu in yo Butsu en Bu po so en jo raku ga jo cho nen Kanzeon bo nen Kanzeon nen nen Jushin ki nen nen furi shin So just what are we chanting? The title, Enme Juku Kanongyo, tells us that this is the ten verse life affirming Kanon Sutra. Mayazumi Roshi translates the sutra as, or translated the sutra as, Kanzeon, at one with the Buddha, related to all Buddhas in cause and effect, and to Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha joyful, pure, eternal being. Morning mind is Kanzeon. Evening mind is Kanzeon. This very moment arises from mind. This very moment is not separate from mind. A serviceable translation, if unchantable. The Boundless Way Liturgy book gives this as the translation. Absorbing world sounds awakens a Buddha right here. This Buddha, the source of compassion. This Buddha receives only compassion. Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, just compassion. Thus, the pure heart always rejoices. In the light, recall this. In the dark, recall this. Moment after moment, the true heart arises. Time after time, there is nothing but this. Now at Empty Moon, we simply chant the Sino-Japanese. Why? Well, perhaps obstinance, perhaps in honor of our Japanese heritage. Other groups, I can think of the San Francisco Zen Center, chant other sutras, particularly the Heart Sutra in Sino-Japanese, alternating every other day with the English translation that we use. 
Chanting an extended piece in a language not one of us knows is, for me, a bridge too far, particularly when the meaning is the point. But the Enne Juku Karangyo is a simple invocation and a calling out to the Bodhisattva in a language other than what we speak every day makes a certain amount of sense. Still, it's good to have some idea of just what we are calling out. Sojin Wiseman, late of the Berkeley Zen Center, has said that the title of the chant, the Enme Juku Kanongyo, translates as Endless Dimension, Ten Phrases, Avalokiteshvara Sutra, and emphasizes that Endless dimension refers not only to time stretching back to the beginningless past and forward to the unknowable future, but to the endless temporal dimension of this very moment. For those of us less inclined to chant in Sino-Japanese, my great-grandfather in the Dharma has left us with an invocation to Avalokiteshvara that goes, and this from Robert Aiken, we call upon Kanzeon to inspire our sutra and our lives. We call upon ourselves to inspire Kanzeon. We call upon ourselves as Kanzeon, enlightening, being enlightened, calling and responding, the birds and the stars as Kanzeon save us, as they themselves, as they as themselves save us. Each thought, ever so brief, is Kanzeon herself, turning the Dharma wheel. Acceptance is Kanzeon, regarding the sounds of the world is Kanzeon. Kanzeon is realized in regarding the distress and pain everywhere and is realized by the sound of geckos and children. The compassionate action of Kanzeon arises from the place of grateful receiving. I venerate the great power of the way, which is generated by the profound act of opening myself. Kanzeon, thus we bow to Buddha. an extended unpacking of those brief 10 lines. And how do we understand this Bodhisattva of compassion we are invoking, this Avalokiteshvara, this Kanzeon? Buddhism has a long history of, in welcoming gods and goddesses, of uh, embracing the beliefs of the lands it finds itself in. Taoism in China, the Bon religion in Tibet, Shinto in Japan. There is no greater world traveler in the Buddhist pantheon than Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of compassion. He, she who hears the cries of the world. In China, the goddess Kuan Yin was recruited to fill her role. In Japan, the Bodhisattva becomes Kanzeon. But Buddhism is a restless practice for all its stillness, and it's now acquired a toehold here in the West. On the East Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach, California, with a stunning view of the Pacific Ocean, is a Vietnamese Buddhist monastery housed in the buildings and grounds the monks had purchased from Catholic nuns, whose convent had fallen into bankruptcy. Those monks have maintained the nuns' collection of numerous statues of Maria Stella Maris, Mary, Star of the Sea. And together with local Catholic pilgrims who gather before the statues each morning, offer incense to what they, the monks, see as an incarnation of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion while Catholics revere the images as Mary, Mother of God, perhaps the newest incarnation of the Bodhisattva of Compassion. 
the very image of the Piata, Mary on the half shell, Kuan Yin, the Chinese goddess and Bodhisattva, pledged like a mother to save us all. The Indian Avalokiteshvara, male in India, female as he or she, makes it across the Himalayas. Mother is all, female and male. Motherhood reaches out and embraces and asks no questions. When I was in law school 40 years ago, I used to take long walks late at night through our Cambridge working class neighborhood. One very cold winter night, nearing midnight as I was walking home, I passed by a classic Cambridge triple-decker when the front door opened and an elderly woman, dressed in a house coat and slippers, came out, walked down the steps and across the small front yard to that ubiquitous blue and white statue of the Virgin Mary on the half shell. Mary, star of the sea. She stood quietly in front of Mary, hands clasped together, seeming to listen intently. But you know, I, I think now this woman's devotion cuts deeper than mere Catholic theology. There was a devotion to something more fundamental, an opening to something deeper, more physical. I used to be amused, and in truth I'm still amused again, perhaps uncharitably, by Christianity's disavowal of what looks suspiciously like polytheism. And in particular, with Catholicism's more expansive polytheism going beyond the Trinity with its veneration of the Virgin Mary. But perhaps they're on to something. Perhaps that elderly woman was on to something. Perhaps those Buddhist monks and Catholic pilgrims in Long Beach are on to something. And here lies an opening and for me, a path forward. The Shushogi, a summary of Ehe Dogen's teachings, often chanted in Soto Zen temples, tells us, do not, being compelled by fear, vainly take refuge in mountain spirits or ghosts or in the shrines of non-Buddhists. Mary on the half shell, Mary star of the sea, here is the bodhisattva of compassion in advance of the Buddha Dharma and acknowledged not in fear, but in veneration, a foothold in the new world. And who is to say that that elderly Cambridge woman was not taking refuge in Avalokiteshvara, the bodhisattva Mary, the new world incarnation of Guan Yin, just as the pilgrims in Long Beach, Buddhist and Catholic, take refuge in that self-same identical image. My grandmother's best friend, Louise, a woman who became a second grandmother to me, once said, I'm not afraid of dying. I just really like to know how things will turn out. She was 92 and concerned not with herself, but with what fate had in store for her nieces and nephews, for me, for my kids. There was a woman who understood the Bodhisattva way. And Louise has left me with the question, how will Buddhism turn out? Things are still fresh here. Whether Buddhism becomes better established is less a question than how it will appear, what form it will take, and for that matter, what form the nation's religious and spiritual life will be changed by its encounter with the Dharma. Whatever the change, and change is, after all, the essence of the Dharma, whatever the change, I'll not pass by another Mary on the half shell, another star of the sea, without offering a moment of thanks to the Bodhisattva a moment of charity in the midst of the uncharitable. Thank you.